I believe that acting is a craft and a very difficult one and a very taxing one and one that you never stop learning completely. And I think we understand it and everybody accepts it in the other performing arts. A musician who stops rehearsing or practicing will be in trouble. A dancer who stops studying is in trouble. They can't even get on stage. And I think that uh, we realize that everywhere else except in acting and I believe it's exactly the same thing. I don't teach the Stanislavski method. I learned from Stanislavski. I do think that the, the whole contemporary way of, of playing would not, there wouldn't be any teachers if it weren't for Stanislavski, there's no question. Uh, what Stanislavski recorded, and this was pe what people forget, that Stanislavski went to great actors like Salvini and Chaliapin and pumped them dry. How do you make this work? How do you make that work? and began to record the way in which genius actors worked. So he didn't invent anything. He was the first one to... to codify. To codify, uh, actually, uh, or to try to. And I don't think any of us have learned the ideal way. I mean, uh, mm. uh, and we never will. And there will always be an enormous difference of opinions. A teacher communicates what he believes to, a, to, a, to another person. Now the way in which I communicate, or the way in you, which you would communicate, maybe the same idea will be different. So there, there's no way of regimenting uh, uh, teaching ways. I think that a lot of what's taught is baloney. And uh, I'm sure that the other teachers think that what I teach is baloney. And I think the, the there young There does actor, seem to be a fair amount of bite and backbiting among you. Enormous, enormous. <laughs> no, I don't backbite because I never name names. <laughs> I really don't, and I would drop dead before I would name names. Well, be, don't do Life that. is too short for that. If I would sit down and try to explain a basic technique in, in ballet or in, in piano in two or three minutes on this 20-minute segment, I, I would do you a disservice to start. I can only say that it is not intangible, it's not mystic, it's not peculiar, it is, it is, uh, uh, it's not fancy. It's, uh, I think that art, the, the essence of art possibly is intangible, but not a craft to, to uh, uh, teach you to function. But first of all, you have to learn about human behavior, you have to understand yourself as a human being. You have to see that you're a million different people and that your own concept of yourself is a cliche. If I would go only on my notion of who I think I am, I couldn't play anybody. Because my notion of myself is that I'm a child of nature, that I am generous, kind, free, <laughs> open, that I run through the landscape, that the, the, oh, come on. Uh, no, then I walk, like now I have this image of how I seem and how I look and what I am, and it's about this big. I walk down the street, I catch myself in a plate glass window. I say, who's that <laughs> peculiar, dumpy looking, crazy woman walking down the street? It has nothing to do with my inner image of myself. Now, within myself, I'm mean, I am a, a unbelievably shy at times. I am unbelievably vulnerable. I can, somebody can hurt my feelings so fast it isn't even funny. Now, that's not my image. My image of myself is that I'm tough, that I'm open, that I can cope with anything. I do the dishes unbelievably well <laughs> and scrub the floor well and paint the house and all that. But I have a million negative qualities. Uh -huh. I also know that I am capable of many other things which I think the people who swallow the fact that they have negative qualities are maybe uh, need a psychiatrist, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, uh, I think that the capability of drawing on oneself to bring a human being on the stage is boundless. I think, let me, let me be opinionated for a minute. Please. Okay. Um, I am on a constant bandwagon um, and uh, feel passionately about this and get in despair about what I think the theater, uh, what acting could be and isn't most of the time. I think the obligation of the actor is to learn how to be on stage, whether it be in Shakespeare or Moliere or Clifford Odets or Neil Simon, a human being, first and last, a human being, that human being that the author has posed on, on the page. And I think the, tr the sadness with the theater is that actors learn to copy other actors. And they learn to 
I mean, to the point where if they, they pride themselves in college, if they walk down the street, that they, they are recognized as an actor, which means that they're phony. They're not human beings. You know that they're an actor because they behave peculiarly. <laughs> and they, uh, uh, when they, what they, many of them aspire for on the stage is to be like other actors rather than like human beings. And I think that's the hardest thing in the world to learn and is not pursued enough. And uh, uh, there are many, many schools of acting and the one that I'm always against is the one that is recognized, it's predictably an actor on stage. You see, I think that these young actors and the casting people, if they are in the maelstrom of what, of Broadway, of films, of, of uh, series on television, of um, uh, soaps, I don't think aspiring young actors have a problem. Now, I work with 150 of them every week. Uh, I think that if they train themselves correctly, and I think that if they are diligent and learn how to maneuver, they will get jobs. Mm -hmm. Really? Oh, absolutely. And as many Well, as what's wrong want, with the ones who are out of work? The, uh, they have not learned to maneuver. When you say maneuver, you mean physically or maneuver people? People. Uh, manipulate. Manipulate. Maneuver and manipulate. Really? Oh, you mean absolutely. Other people? Uh -huh. Really? Oh, yeah. And I think diligence, by diligence, you see, I consider myself very diligent. That's why I got a job right away and <clears throat> got lots of jobs. Now, maybe then I didn't like the kind of jobs, then I was in trouble. But to get jobs, if you, and I'm sure every agent who is going to come on will agree with me in the casting agent, if you are persistent enough, by law of average, you will get a job. Mm. Now, the, I think you can, the next thing, what, whether it's star quality or star radiance or an extraordinary, combined with luck, these are other things. I think, the, and this is what I wanted to say, the artists, the actors who have a problem in America are the actors who want to be serious artists. And I think they have a problem. I don't think anybody else has a problem. Oh, so you're distinguishing between just working and being and an how. artist. And how. Okay, what was your first job? My first job was Nina and the Seagull with the <laughs> Lunts. <laughs> Make a movie. I made one, the boys from Brazil was okay, there so was only one scene. Uh, so it wasn't torture. But the other one where I was on the set for three months in Murphy's, California, waiting for <laughs> camera setups. I said, let me sweep the floor so that I can feel I'm functioning here. I have never felt so unfunctioning as an actor on the screen. Now, I would, I don't know what I would rather play in the streets for free than make another movie. When you play something that goes from here to there, and let's suppose that it's an emotional scene, it has its own dynamics. And every time you do it, the dynamics are slightly different. If you really do it, now, what you see, oh, I get so excited, my heart's pounding. <laughs> what you see on the screen are little pieces of the master, little pieces of the uh, cross shooting, uh, an occasional close up, and each one has totally different dynamics. So you have not seen me act. It's an eighth of what I can do. It's an eighth of what I can do. That's, yeah, what, what, I, you, you know, That's what I don't like. Well, it is a director's medium. Totally, and I think it would be wonderful. I don't want to direct, but I think for the director it would be unbelievably satisfying. For the actor who loves what he's doing, I think it is the pits we won't say. okay yeah. <laughs> i feel very lonely every now and then the critics also accept and so does the audience they are absolutely willing to accept something that is a recognizable to me old-fashioned dead form in other words if you do enough Stern, of this they will accept it nice isn't that wonderful and he's so theatrical and she's so theatrical and so exciting and i think at its very best it's like watching a tightrope performer uh, uh, perform brilliantly, possibly, but I don't believe that they're human beings, and that's what I demand when I go to the theater, and what I demand of myself if I'm on stage, that I believe I exist as a human being in that time and place.
I really feel I wouldn't have had any career with unless I had studied with Uta. I wouldn't have had a career. I didn't really know how to act, and and yet I was earning a living. And and、mm. Uta used to say, "You're very slick. You're very slick." I have to find out what makes that slickness go, and we have to tear it apart. And all the time I thought it was wonderful, and then it turned out I wasn't. And then I had to go through a painful period of relearning.、Mm. And I still think, gee, it's amazing. I earn my living doing this. I can't believe I do that. It's really because of Uta. So that whatever she says is is the best that of anything anyone can say. And as far as my own preparation is concerned, I'm serious when I say I get everything straightened at home, and I go down. To the theater, and I take thirty minutes to myself, and I do a lot of praying, you know. And then I go and I think, I just want it to be fresh tonight. I want it to be fresh. I want to be a real person. I want to give somebody some little thing that maybe will help them with their lives. And then I go home and I take the dishes out of the dishwasher and I cover everybody up and I go to sleep. Glamorous so, life, you.、Mean. Yeah, right. I was trying for something ideal,、um, even though the time on the road was hard. It was brutal. It was painful because we were still. Under the thumb of John Houseman and Michael Kahn and Margaret Holly and the people that trained us at Juilliard, which was also another, you know, a brutal、uh, existence training these actors. But the business, there was an ideal instilled in us. There was a, a nobility instilled in us at Juilliard of, of, of a kind of theater that, when I became a professional, the, the first two professional things I did bombed and were. Very bad emotional experiences for all involved. So I was hurt. I was angry. I was confused. I was a kid. To, to now, many years later, to see there's nothing different between then and now. Yeah, I can handle it yeah, better. Yeah, the fact is that you've done okay without it. <laughs>、um, I guess. I guess I have. And、yeah. I guess it's because I was born with a voice. I thank God every day I can sing. And you knew that at four. I knew that very young. I started singing, I guess, fairly early. But the voice revealed itself, I think, in my teens,、um, that it was a big voice. And I knew in my teens that it was a Broadway voice, because I wanted to be a rock and roll singer. Who didn't? You know, we AM transistor radios at Jones Beach, listening to, you know, Cousin Brucey, rock and roll. That was my influence. Um, but I knew that it was a Broadway voice, and I knew I would end up on the Broadway stage. Not necessarily where I wanted to go, but I knew that that was my destiny. At fifteen, sixteen years old, wandering around an apple orchard on Locust Road in Northport, like I said, I thank God every day I can sing. Because, as you said earlier, it's very difficult even now, even now, but especially now, for any of us to get employed, to be employed in theater. Very difficult, and we've had a career though. These kids are just starting out, and if we are, and I love to say this, on the downside of our career, so what? What do these kids have to look forward to? The business is, well, the business has been changing radically since I became a member, a professional up in this business. So I can't imagine where it's going from here. What you really need to do is just make smart decisions after the movie that put you on the map, and、uh, it's almost axiomatic that. Right after your first big hit, you will make one or two mistakes.、Uh -huh. See, Superman didn't limit my opportunities; it created so many that I was too, too young and too immature to understand them. Yeah. And in a ways, I was miscast or made mistakes, whatever. Which now,、um, after being a film actor for 15 years and a theater actor for 25 years, now I feel okay. I'm really ready. And so the、mm -hmm. process for me actually was:、uh, people watched me learn how to act for the camera in front, you know, in 1,500 theaters and huge. I mean, I didn't do it. Yeah. By playing supporting parts in in NYU student films or something,、mm -hmm. I did it big time right in front of you,、right. and that to me, you know,、uh, was it was a kind of interesting way to go. And I think all you need all you need to do really is it's one part that makes money. That's all there、yeah. is to it. That camera that as it comes close to you, there is a tendency as they push the camera closer, it's an intrusion in your reality,、yeah. and people's attention level tends to increase, particularly when they're coming in for close-ups. Right. And so the viewer's in attention level increases. No, the actor's the actor's is tension the, level. Oh, tension and, level. Yeah. Okay. And so what happens is, I mean, a, a camera、okay. has to be absolutely ignored. In order to be won over completely, doesn't that take Zen concentration? Though no, it takes relaxation. In fact, the, hard, the less hard you try, the better you do.、Uh -huh. And so the the one tip is is try to act in your close up with the same ease that you did the off camera for the other guy. 
for those of you who don't know, off camera. Boy, you're, you're so right about that, and I didn't yeah. realize it. I, the off camera is when they're on, say they're on Dick's close up, and I'm going to yeah. say the lines and see, and they'll film him. Notice now the camera's not in on me, so I'm totally relaxed. Well, when they turn it around and come in here, don't let that layer That's of artifice right. increase. That's right. That's right. This is an insight. Yeah, you put a pressure on yourself, and, yeah. and, and you've got to be absolutely just at ease so the camera can yeah. eavesdrop and, and pick up reality. And you, if you try to sell, your reality in any way, then it comes across as acting and then you're in trouble. We had so much time on our hands. I said, okay, you have two choices. You go outside and drink and go to bars and live the life or just paint your windows black and, and try to learn something new. And I thought, writing, writing. Now, you understand, I never passed an English course in my life, ever, none. D was a good good that was good i was happy with the d but i found that through repetition and after a while you start to really listen to people speak they have a certain pentameter or rhythm and i was able to build on that if you read my first few screenplays they're atrocious really really atrocious but i kept going and i kept going and i kept going so you only can get better. You can't get worse. You know, you're a bad writer. You're not going to become a worse writer. You're going to become a better writer if you just keep it up. And that's when I realized that, that I'm so lucky that I failed as an actor because I know my career would be over. I mean, I've written a lot of screenplays that, you know, how many have written, Jennifer? 42 screenplays, a lot of screenplays. And I would say maybe 20 of them are unreadable. But the fact is you did it, you completed it, you went from beginning to end. And, and that's the only reason I'm here today. The one thing about making movies, besides watching your hairline recede, you, <laughs> you go, God, why didn't I try harder? Why couldn't I have done that better? And now every young actor I work with, I say, you better look at making films with you have about 10 bullets. Everyone has got to hit a target now. You just can't go out there and be sloppy. And if I see you come on the set holding pages, you're now learning your lines because you think it's fresh in your mind. It doesn't work that way. It's a skill set. Acting is a skill set. You must not know your lines. You have to understand what they mean. And that takes time. Just like in life, it takes time to understand people. You just don't get it like that. And uh, I would say that's the biggest thing I try to pass on to people. I say, pretend this is your last film. Would you be this sloppy? Would you be this casual? Would you show up three hours late? I doubt it. Never give up, never give in, never give out. That's it. It's real simple. Never give up, never give in. Never give up. Never give up. Just keep it going because you never know what's behind the next corner. You'd be shocked. It's very easy to quit. And I know, believe me, I, I like to quit every day. I don't want to do things, but I force myself to do it because I know there's a reward coming. Maybe it's around the next corner. Maybe it's 10 miles away. That's the biggest lesson is that don't give up on yourself. It never occurred to me to be anything otherwise because I see it as such an essential part, uh, an essential trait that runs through every success story that's ever inspired me. Yeah. It begins with somebody seeing something and being able to chart a path for themselves towards it and have that extra energy and drive that says an, an, an obstacle I'm just gonna push through and the thing that I love about ambition at this stage of my life is I'm just like, and it's not going to matter if I'm by myself. I have to bring as many people with me as I can. And so I've always had a very neutral, positive relationship with ambition. And maybe at some point, I don't know, people kind of thought that like ambition came with an unsheathed, very sharp blade and yeah. like I was going to, you know, hurt someone to get what I want. But I just think it means you're getting stuff done.